Hello and welcome in this session on course scholastic assessment in science. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh, your course coordinator for the course Pedagogy of Science. And today we are going to discuss about some methods and some tools which you can use for course scholastic assessment of your students, of your learners in your classroom. As we know that assessment, whether it is scholastic or course scholastic, has its own value. And for all around development of your learners, you need to assess them not only on their academic activities or the scholastic activities, but also about their attitude, their values, their life skills and everything. And if you are a science teacher, your responsibility is more. Because in a science classroom, you not only teach them different concepts, facts, principles, theories, but also you give them an opportunity to develop their life skills, to develop a positive attitude, scientific temper, scientific values, and to maintain a good social life by applying the concepts of science in their day-to-day -day life. So when we talk about the course scholastic assessment in science, I want to quote here two documents. One was issued by NCERT and one was released by CBSC in starting of this decade in 2010 or in 2011. There they have talked about various parameters, various tools, various methods for assessment of course scholastic domains. Generally, what are the areas which we cover under course scholastic assessment? These areas are life skills, attitude, values, the participation of our learners and achievement of our learners in different co-curricular activities and also it includes health and physical education activities. So all the associated activities which are not directly linked with the content of a textbook, though development of these dimensions is essential in a learner comes under course scholastic assessment. When we think about life skills, World Health Organization WHO has defined life skills as the abilities for adaptive and positive behavior that enable individuals to deal effectively within the demands and challenges of everyday life. So WHO is of the opinion that every individual, every learner requires certain skills to bring certain adaptations and to bring positivity in their behavior so that they can face the challenges of their life as well as they can meet the demands of their daily life by applying the knowledge and skills which they are keen. If you talk about a science student, a science student also requires to develop life skills. And for this, first you need to know what are different life skills. If we talk about the core life skills proposed by World Health Organization, they classified core life skills into three main domains. Thinking skills, emotional skills and social skills. What comes under core life skills? Under thinking skills, it is self-awareness, critical thinking, creative thinking, decision making, problem solving, or you can say where they need to apply their cognitive abilities. Such skills are coming under a domain or under a set called thinking skills. The another domain of life skills is emotional skills. How they will cope up with their emotions, how they will manage their emotions, how they will control their emotions, how they will understand the emotions of others, how they will use the emotions for desired learning outcomes, all comes under the skill coping with the emotions. Another problem in a classroom, and many times we face this specifically in a science classroom, is the stress. 
students in classroom develop stress due to various reasons sometimes the stress of the content or the difficulty level of the topic sometimes the stress due to the peer pressure if some students in the class are performing better some other students may face a stress because they are not able to perform equally well as compared to their peers sometimes the stress of the examination anxiety everything is there so how a student or a learner will learn to deal with such stress that skill also comes under the domain emotional skill and known as coping with the stress under the social skills the skills like empathy understanding of interpersonal relationships and effective communication these are equally important life skills for an individual as a teacher you not only need to be empathetic towards your learners but you also need to develop the empathy among your learners so that they can understand others problems and they can respect other views others views by placing themselves in place of them because we generally call empathy as a skill where we feel something when we put our foot in someone others shoe this is a common proverb which is associated with the concept of empathy then what kind of relationship we are maintaining with our peers with our colleagues with our society members with our family members all these are social skills and how do we communicate in science communication is very important because when you communicate as a science learner when you communicate as a science teacher or a science person your way of communication is entirely different from the person who is belongs to literature i repeat from the person who belongs to literature or who belongs to social sciences because your discipline has its impact on your communication so how can you communicate effectively as a science learner as a science teacher these things also coming under life skills now if you want to assess these life skills what you first need you first need the assessment indicators what are these assessment indicators i have taken some examples from cbsc handbook on cc from 2010 and in that handbook they have suggested few assessment indicators i repeat they have suggested so these are suggestive you can develop your own assessment indicators according to the situation according to the class according to the level of the learner and according to the content so when we think about the life skills under the category thinking skills what we need to assess if our learners are original flexible and imaginative in their attitude and in their behavior now think about a science learner if a science learner is not able to think originally if a science learner is not imaginative how he or she can come to a new or a better solution because many things in science have started with imagination later concretized and established through experimentation and verification of the facts then raising questions identifying and analyzing the problem if as a science teacher you are talking about any social problem any problem which is happening in the environment or around the learner it can be related to pollution it can be related to any other issue it can be related to a particular disease it can be related to any scientific invention or discovery or destruction are your students able to raise questions believe me a good classroom is a classroom where a student asks questions not the teachers though in traditional teaching learning when we prepare our lesson plans and older models we prepare a lot of questions and we expect that we will ask the question and stu will students will keep on answering these questions and we will proceed in our content in our lesson that was the old practice we should encourage our learners to ask questions their questions may be incomplete their questions may not be relevant according to you but they are relevant according to them because in classroom it is believed that no question is a wrong question 
So you need to develop the skills of asking questions, identifying, and analyzing the problems in your learners. Are your learners able to implement a well thought out decision and take the responsibility what is going on? Suppose they are participating in a project, it is a naturalistic inquiry, they are doing something, something is not happening as per the expectations, they are making some chemical for testing, the chemical is not up to that label that it can give a desired answer. Are they able to take the responsibility of their mistakes and learn from that? Are they able to implement a well thought out decision? This, is, this comes under thinking skills. Then are they able to generate new ideas with fluency? And if you suggest or if they get any new idea from someone else, are they able to elaborate or build on that idea? So these are few indicators through which you assess that yes, thinking skills are developing among your learners. Similarly, if you want to assess the social skills, what should be the assessment indicator for social skills? It can be identifying, verbalizing and responding effectively to others emotions in an empathetic manner. If your students are able to get along well with others, if someone is criticizing their work, their attitude, their behavior, their outcomes of the study, are they taking that criticism positively and for improvement purpose? When someone is talking to them, someone is delivering a lecture, someone is demonstrating something, are they listening actively? Are they able to communicate using the appropriate, I repeat, are they able to communicate using the appropriate words or, you know, or intonation and the body language? If it is so, then social skills are developing among your learners. Similarly, if you want to assess the emotional skills, then you also require certain indicators. It can be that if someone is able to identify one's own strengths and weaknesses, if someone is able to be comfortable with one's own self and overcome weaknesses for positive self-concept, if someone is able to identify the cause and effect of stress on oneself, if your students are able to develop and use multifaceted strategies to deal with the stress, and if they are showing the ability to express and respond to emotions with an awareness of the consequences, it means that yes, emotional skills are developing among them. So what do you need to do? When you are assessing co-scholastic dimension, especially the life skill, you need to identify that which life skill you are going to test or you are going to develop first through a particular activity, through a particular content, through a particular lesson. Then if you have tried to develop a particular life skill in a content, how you can assess it, what will you assess there, what will be the indicators, you need to frame the indicators first. Then comes the tool. You identified the skill, you identified the assessment indicator, what should be the tool? So for course scholastic assessment, there are tools like checklists, observation, anecdotal records, portfolios. These are very common tools which generally teachers use for course scholastic assessment of learners, whether it is a science class or even in other subjects too. Here is again an example from a CVSC handbook. A teacher tries to develop a checklist for assessing the thinking skill. So what is the checklist? He or she has to prepare certain items, certain questions and then need to check whether these things are happening, these things are existing or not. So it can be an observational tool. If someone has taught something to develop the thinking skills along with the content, then he or she need to prepare certain questions, certain items on which he or she will observe the class or the student and try to know that whether this thing is existing or not. Because checklist is basically a tool through which you test or you try to ensure there are something in the list and these things are existing or not. So does the student show creativity during the class activities? If you are giving some class activities, they are doing that class activity according to the answer given in the textbook, according to the style or the answer suggested by you. But some students may be there who are trying to use some creative ways, some alternative ways, even sometimes the ways which you do not know. 
that it means they are showing some creative skills they are applying their mind thinking skill is developing among them does she or he accept the challenge enthusiastically does he or she try to give new ideas or concepts and try to go beyond conditions set up does he or she ask questions related to the set task students may be there who will ask only the questions which are related to the task given to them but there are students in whose minds questions comes frequently and many questions may not be directly related to that set task or directly related to the condition or the concept which you have taught but it may be on its implication it may be on its background so because their mind starts working they start thinking some questions may come in their mind which sometimes we occasionally say these questions are out of syllabus nothing is out of syllabus if a student is talking about a particular concept or a particular thing does he or she create doubts by asking irrelevant thing away from the task does he or she try to help others or motivate others during the group activity again this is a thinking skill checklist does he or she try to volunteer for special assignments does he or she try to do things in different way even if it is a single activity does he or she like to think out of box does he or she try to apply knowledge or a skill in a new situation does he or she think about all the possible options before starting a task so these are few points on the basis of which you observe and you try to ascertain that your thinking skill is developing in my students like the thinking skills you can also develop checklist for emotional skills you can develop a checklist for social skills if you go through these handbooks and the modules developed by cbsc and ncert you will get a lot of idea so you go through these documents get the idea and develop your own checklist for the skills which you want to develop in your science classroom then the observation schedule like the checklist there is a very effective tool called observation schedule in observation schedule it is a quantitative method for measuring the classroom behavior of the learners so what you can do you can use it as a tool of assessment in variety of situations like if you ask your students to participate in a debate or they are giving some elocution or they are participating in any group work or they are doing any practical or laboratory activity either they are completing any project either they are in play field or in school player school prayer or they are in clubs or festivals you can observe your students any time what do you need to do you need to again frame certain indicators on the basis of which you will observe your learners so what observation schedule has observation schedule has certain indicators and you you observe your students and try to ascertain whether they are there or not for example if in an observation schedule your students are talking or for example if they are debating about something or they are in elocution are they reflecting the depth of the knowledge of the content are they able to conceive the strength of the argument did you notice the fluency dictation and pronunciation quality have they shown the ability to contradict a given point of view are they respectful to the opponent are they showing ability to take criticism positively what kind of body language they are using while arguing so these are the things which you will notice through observation you can use this observation schedule during any activity it can be a group activity it can be a debate it can be a elocution anything so your observation schedule is also very good tool for assessment of course scholastic activities the next tool is rating scale what is a rating scale rating scale is kind of a subjective method where not a single answer is correct you give your respondents a range of the scores and they need to choose which one is most appropriately applicable to a particular situation person or event so what you do in rating scales you categorize the objects events or persons on a scale represented by a series of continuous numerals or letters so a rating scale can be letter rating scale or letters a rating scale can be a numerical rating scale but every rating scale has a set of points which basically describe the varying degree of dimensions of an attribute which is being observed so you can prepare a rating scale of 3 point you can prepare a rating scale of 5 point you can prepare a rating scale of 
7 point or 9 point, it depends up to you. Here is an example of a rating scale. Here it is 4 point rating scale, not 5, not 3. And you see the label of the rating, exceeds goal, meet goals, approach the goals, goals not yet meet. And what are the tasks or the criteria? Remember in any tool, whether it is a rating scale, whether it is an observation schedule, whether it is a checklist, you need to find the criteria, you need to define the criteria or the indicators on the basis of which you will assess, on the basis of which you will assess an individual. Here you can see that the criteria are like students are able to correctly state the problem and identify the information needed to solve it and the steps needed to arrive at a solution. This example suits to a laboratory situation in a science classroom. If you have given them some experiments and they are collecting some data, are they able to produce reasonable estimation or the estimates of the data values not identified but needed for the solution? If there are concepts like velocity, acceleration, average speed, are they able to apply the concepts and formula related to motion? Are they make accurate conversation as needed to solve the problem? Are they able to communicate the conclusions clearly using examples if they are needed? So on these criteria, you try to assess the level of their achievement, not in scholastic terms, but in co-scholastic terms. Next very effective tool for co-scholastic assessment is anecdotal records. As the name suggests, these are anecdotes. Means the informal observations or the observational notes in form of a story. So a teacher basically records what a learners are learning, their academic performance, their learning behavior, their achievement and their social interaction. So these are basically written observations, word to word, action for action, and exactly what a child is doing or saying, a teacher just note what he or she is observing. Then this day-to-day -day development of learner's record, as well as their specific behavior, especially the behavior which is a cause of a concern, it can be speech pattern, it can be language development, it can be social or emotional development or peer interaction is being used to assess the learner then it is a good tool so what you can have and in an anecdotal record let us take an example of an anecdotal record on reading habits suppose you want to assess the reading habits of your learners by using the anecdotal record as a tool so what kind of information you will search in anecdotal records or you will keep does a learner show a positive attitude towards reading the books does a learner choose his or her favorite books? Does a learner read books for pleasure or information? Does a learner read them silently? Does a learner reflect on his or her reading? Does a learner share his or her ideas with others during literature discussion? So these are some criteria on the basis of which you will analyze the anecdotal records of your learners to find out their performance on reading habits. You can create many such criteria for different abilities. One more very important tool is portfolio. Nowadays portfolio as well as e-portfolio are being used quite extensively to assess the learner's progress and performance across the session or in a particular year. So what a portfolio is? Portfolio is basically the collection of the evidences of learners work over a period of time. It can be a three month portfolio, it can be a one month portfolio, it can, it can be a portfolio of a particular subject, of a particular activity or it can be a portfolio of whole session for all the classes. So what it does, portfolio basically provides a cumulative record of growth and development of a skill or competency in an area over a period of time. It enables a learner to demonstrate to others his or her learning and progress. How? Let us take an example. That in a science class of botany, you are talking about many structures, cell structures, then sections, longitudinal sections, horizontal sections, part of a leaf, part of a stem, xylem, phloem and all tissues in a 
plant stem and root. So if you are talking about all these things and you are showing them a lot of pictures and you are expecting that they should draw it neatly and properly and they should understand that which tissue is where. Now if you assess only on the basis of one picture or one work, you may not be able to learn that whether your learner has progressed or not. But if you ask a learners to show their book or the workbook where he or she has drawn these pictures continuously from day one till the end of the session. And if you notice a cumulative uh, progression, a progression from the initial image to the last image, it means that the learner is learning that art. It means that the learner is learning that art. So portfolios can be used quite effectively. So what can be under a portfolio? You can use photographs, you can use paintings and other examples of artistic endeavors. Sometimes in science, we ask our students to develop some models, working models as well as static models. They should also showcase those models. Audiovisual recordings may be their self-assessment sheet which we give them during our teaching learning, during our classroom discussions. Let them keep all these assessment sheets at the end. You can assess them. There can be peer assessment sheets. There can be parent assessment sheets. Many things, many things can be there in the portfolio. Then how will you assess the attitude and values in your classroom? For example, as a science teacher, we want to assess the attitude of our learners towards the environment. Then what should be the indicators for it? We will try to assess that are our learners aware or sensitive to the threats posed by the nature, posed to the nature by the mankind and so responsibility towards the environment? Does my learner participate in school driven activities related to the care of the environment? Does the student participate in community driven activities related to the care of the environment? Do they take any initiative and plan activities directed towards the betterment of the environment? Do my learners care for others, respect for life, respect to the mother earth and love for one's own country? So these are the attitudes which we basically expect from a learner who is learning science. So how we can assess? We can use such indicators to assess. Similarly, the value system. Are they able to understand the need of the rules and follow them? Because through science, we explain them, we give them opportunity to learn about many rules, to follow many rules, whether in the classroom or in the laboratory or in the field work. Are they honest and ethically exhibiting their integrity? If they are collecting some data and if they are not honest about that data, it means that value has not been developed in them. Are they respect the diversity among the learners, the culture, the opinion, the beliefs, the ability, and also they respect the opposite sex? Are our learners showing a kind, helpful, and responsible behavior or attitude to display the commitment and an open-mindedness? The open-mindedness is one of the prerequisite for science teaching learning. Are they work efficiently? Are they respect time? Not only their own time, but the other's time too. Are they display a positive attitude towards peers, adults, community and seek and provide solutions? So if these values are developing among your learners and you are observing them, only then you can say that yes, in your science teaching learning, values are also developing. So whether it is values, whether it is attitude, whether it, uh, it is uh, life skills, you need to develop all these things along with the opportunity to create knowledge about a particular content, concept, theory, principle or method. So when a science teacher think about co-scholastic assessment of his or her learner, he or she need to think in multiple dimensions, in multiple ways, how you can develop a particular life skill, how you will assess it, how will you assess their attitude towards a particular situation. Sometimes attitude can be assessed, attitude towards teacher, attitude towards the school, attitude towards self, self, attitude towards society. These are also the dimensions of co-scholastic assessment of attitude. Then value system, what kind of value system is being developed among the learners through your science teaching learning? So I hope that this description will help you in understanding that what is the importance of co-scholastic assessment in science and what are the tools and techniques which you can use while assessing your learners on their co-scholastic dimensions as a science teacher. So dear teachers, try to use the steps and the methods suggested here 
and also explore the documents suggested by me to know more about different tools and techniques of post holistic assessment in science and enjoy learning thank you very much